Dan Harrington and Scott Robinson uh, were the two guys that started the label. And I knew them because of they worked at Arista when BR549 was on Arista. And uh, they were cool guys. They, they were kind of Arista Austin, you know. They stuck us down there because they figured we fit there. So they had started this this label, and they had just had a big hit with uh, writing with Private Malone by David Ball, and uh, they signed Br. We did a couple of records with them, and then after Br disbanded, uh, my good friend Dave Rowe, who's a great studio musician around town, played with Johnny Cash, played with Jerry Reed, played with Dwight Yoakam, and you know, great great musician. He's like, hey, let's uh, we need to do a Johnny Cash tribute record with like people that are kind of left of center, you know, our group of people. And we pitched it to the, to Dan and Scott and they're like, well, yeah, that, that sounds like it could go. That, that would be a pretty good idea. So, you know, we got like Eddie Angel and, and, uh, Sheldon Hank, the third, and, uh, a bunch of, a bunch of different people, Rosie Flores. And we sequestered in what is now Cowboy Keith's studio in Inglewood was a basement studio that we used to make demos and we got, you know, we were the band and Kenny Vaughn did a cut too. And he was in a lot of the cuts too. We, we kind of were backed up a bunch of people and uh, it was pretty successful. And at the same time, Marty Stewart did one for a major label, but it was kind of cool because we didn't do a lot of the same songs. There was, it was, there wasn't a lot of overlap and it seemed like, you know, uh, companion pieces and cash loved both. It was cash was still alive and cash loved both of them. And, you know, Mandy Barnett and I got to do Jackson, which we've done on the Grand Ole Opry before, which is pretty cool. So that was pretty successful. And they were looking for another thing for Roe and I to co-produce. And they came up with the idea of us. Well, actually I think we came up with the idea of doing a Waylon Jennings tribute record. Cause I think that's what you're asking about, right? The Waylon Jennings. We we called up a bunch of different people. We called up Nora Jones, who had just won like twenty seven Grammys or some shit like that, and uh, she actually did her cut in New York. She she was going to fly to Nashville to do it, but she was you know really busy, and we wanted to take you. So and we got her to do World of Surprise, which is perfect for her, you know, as a as a keyboardist. And we had different group of people. We had Henry Rollins doing Lonesome Ornery and Mean. And we brought in like this, I, I can't remember the guy's name who was the drummer, Dave Rowe would remember. And, you know, double kick, it's like this heavy backing track that and it kind of came out, it was perfect for him, you know. We kind of went even further out on the edge. And uh, who we had, who else did we have on that record? I haven't, I haven't seen that for a long, but we did it at the same studio, which was called Big Ear Studio at that time. Carlene was on it. What did what did Carlene do? Uh, she did a she did a great cut on that. That was where I met her. That was where I met Carlene. I'm still really good friends with her. She's one of the greatest of all times. She's a legend to me, man. And, and I, it was the greatest compliment that I could have ever gotten. She's like, she met me and she's like, oh, you look like Nick when he was young and handsome. That's, and incidentally, Nick Lowe is still a very handsome man, I would say. Dave Rowe, yeah. So I met Dave Rowe because he came up and introduced himself while we were playing at Roberts because he was playing with Cash then. And I went to see him play a couple of times, and we just got to be friends, you know. You know, I'm, I'm a little younger than him. He's a well-respected, all-around, you know, upright and electric bass player. I, I was, I'm kind of like the little brother. I'm the old man now to a lot of people. There's some little brothers to me, but... I love him, man. We keep in touch all the time, and we he, he brought me in on on this. Uh, it was his idea to do the Johnny Cash and and uh, Waylon Jennings tribute records, uh, and um, we sat and made phone calls and talked to people and got people interested in it, and and everybody showed up, and and it was always really fun. And you know, he's so incredibly seasoned in the studio that. You know, and I got to see how those guys, the studio guys, treated each other. You know, because I was always in a band situation, so it was our band in the studio, and I hadn't really done many sessions that were outside until the early two thousand. You know, really, I, I didn't do an extra session. I might sing background vocal on something, but 
you know, and I got to see how the studio guys talk to each other, which is brutal. Like one of them will say, Hey man, uh, what are you doing Tuesday? And the, no, no, nothing. He goes, maybe somebody will call. <laughs> Jesus Christ. They, they got thick skin there in the studio, but, but yeah, road taught me a whole lot about playing in a, in different situations with different people and being, being able to adapt to that. I mean, usually they call people that do a thing. They call you because they want that thing, you know, and you, with, with Roe, it was the upright, you know, he was known as the, uh, an upright player when actually he learned to play the upright bass for Johnny cash. He didn't know how to do it before he played the cash gig. And now he's, you know, he's a monster and he's having trouble telling people he plays electric because he's a monster electric player too, singing and playing. I've seen Dave Rowe on bright cause he played with Don Kelly down there for years on at Roberts on lower Broadway. And I've seen him play pretty woman and singing at the same time on an upright bass. Dun, 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 dun. And he's playing and singing and acting like it's nothing. I'm like blows my mind. Anyway, he's uh, I, I really admire, I admire him. Don't, don't let him see this because I don't want him to think. I mean, he knows I love him, but 